So let's bring in 2024 presidential candidate and author of Woke Inc., Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, let's talk a little bit about this big, you know, the left is making out like, oh, they got they got DeSantis now because Disney's going to pull a, a billion dollar project in Orlando, which is, by the way, a drop in the bucket in Orlando. Um, and frankly, Vivek, I'm happy not to have 2000 more liberal woke voters in the state of California. Well, the deeper problem is that Disney thinks it's entitled to these crony capitalist privileges in places like the state of Florida. Disney's a disastrous company. Its top shareholders are BlackRock, State Street and Vanguard, the same top shareholders of most major companies driving wokeism through most corporate boardrooms. So I think it's important that they get disciplined for making awful decisions and enjoying crony capitalist benefits in return. If I have a critique of Governor DeSantis, it's not what he gets from the left. My only regret is that some of the very crony capitalist privileges that Disney enjoys actually were signed into law in 2021 by Governor DeSantis himself, which I think undermines some of that credibility. But that's a detail. I think the broader point is that these companies expect crony capitalist privileges only when it suits them. Guess what? There's two sides to this. Extricate yourself from crony capitalism. You don't get to enjoy those benefits anymore. And I think I'm glad that Disney hopefully will be taught its lesson. Yeah, it will be, because if you've spent any time in Disney and I have I went to college in Central Florida, that, that property and that infrastructure that they've built there is worth several hundred billion dollars, maybe more, maybe approaching a trillion. They, they have a lot, a lot going on. They can't move. I don't know why they're playing a game with him. We weigh in on this ma uh, Time Magazine cover. What do you make of this? And, and, and again, this is Time, a left-leaning, hard left-leaning uh, publication. What, what does that say to you, sir? Well, look, I think that there are more than two choices in this Republican primary. And I think that part of the problem is the left would love to see the Republican primary where it would otherwise naturally head, which is to be a battle of biographies between Trump and DeSantis. The reason I'm in this race, Eric, is that I think we in our party need to be talking more about the what and the why. What do we stand for and why do we stand for it? That's what's most important. What does it mean to be a Republican? What does it mean to be a conservative? What does it mean to be an American? We're not having that debate. And part of what I saw in this race was it was heading into a biographical clash between Trump and DeSantis. I'm in this race. I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. And I could tell you as a member of my generation that to put America first, we need to rediscover what America is. That's what we need to be talking about, because I'll tell you this, America first, it doesn't belong to Trump. It doesn't belong to DeSantis. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country. I'm actually talking to you from the south after I spent a day in the south side of Chicago, Eric, not a place where traditional Republicans go. Many of them actually share America first values, are upset about illegal immigrant encampments, even in the south side of Chicago. Yeah. I think we can win the next election in a landslide if Why, we actually make it about the agenda. Well, rather I, my, than a my hometown, brawl. my hometown, Chicago, uh, you know, it's a, the, the liberal wasteland, the barren wasteland of liberalism. Not sure why you're there. They, um, uh, Tim Scott jumped into the race today. Please tell us what you think of, of Tim Scott. What were his chances? So, look, I actually love Tim Scott's optimism. I think he has a future in the Republican Party and the conservative movement. But I think if you want to move the needle, I don't think it's going to happen with a professional politician or a career politician. It's going to have to take somebody with a spine of steel who is going to dismantle that governmental bureaucracy, shut down the unconstitutional administrative state. That's what I'm going in to do. I don't think somebody who has been in the process of compromising in a legislature or in a Senate or even somebody who comes from the professional political apparatus at all, dependent on the donor class. And that's not specific so, to Tim so Scott Vivek, or Vivek, Ron Vivek, Sanders. I, 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 I got a minute. All I, professional politicians. I, I yeah. got a minute and I, I, I absolutely adore your policy. I just love everything you say. I'm a libertarian. I'm a, I come from the business world. You. And you are speaking exactly my language. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to look you right in the eye. I don't think you're going to be president. But... You might be vice president. You might be a cabinet member. You might be highly involved and you might be president down the road. I see it. I see a path. I don't see a path for Tim Scott. I don't see a path for Nikki Haley now or later. Why do people get into the into the race to be president? Is it for to be president because they think they're going to be or is it for something else? So, look, I would rather have a sharp poke in the eye than pursue a career in politics. I didn't think I was going to be a politician. I'm not a politician. I enjoy building businesses, writing books and leading in other ways. 
But I'm in this race, Eric, because I do think we can take the America First agenda to the next level. As Reagan did in 1980, I think we can actually revive what it means to be an American based on first principles and moral authority, not just vengeance and grievance. So I am actually in this race to win. I'm polling ahead of where Trump was when he came down the escalator of June of 2015, and everybody said the same thing about him back then as well. I admire what he did, but I'm the new outsider in this race. You follow those trends in the polls over the last six weeks, you probably are. You'll see that I'm on a trajectory similar to what Trump was on in in the summer of 2015. And more importantly, I think that we're going to make the party better between oh, Trump you are. and myself. Oh, you I think are, we're going my to have friend. A great debate oh, about you the are. first agenda. You know what else so, you're doing? You. I don't know if you if you realize what you're doing, or if uh, my audience does, or your followers do. Whether you win or not, you're making the party better. You're also teaching the party, the candidates, the people who lead the party on what America should be striving for. Love having you on, Vivek. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you for joining us. It's good to see you, Eric. All right, coming up, while the FBI was investigating the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, guess who the FBI shut down?